first uh, chosen to be the next presiding bishop of Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. What went through your mind at the time? Uh, you know, it was uh, shocking, all right, honestly. You know, I was humbled by it. And, you know, to succeed Bishop Ward is a tremendous opportunity. And I just felt like, you know, Lord, why me? And I realized everything God has ever done in my life, in my life, I said, why me? You know, and I think for me it was more so uh, a, a great sense of humility, a sense of stewardship, and this opportunity to see how God would use me. And I just said, Lord, I just want to be available for you. And so for me, it was just the most humbling moment of my life. I watched you on Periscope, of course, yeah. and, I watch, yeah. and I watch Mount Zion um, Church okay, yeah. live stream, yeah. and I see that you have a heart for the people, as you know, that yeah. God wants us to have. Um, do you think that this is, this is a great quality for a leader? I why? think so. Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, particularly this generation, you know, obviously you know uh, that this generation needs authenticity. I think transparency and authenticity are the two things that, that really uh, attract this generation. And I think uh, any leader, I think you really have to have a heart for people. It can't be about you can't be some narcissistic head trip, but it's really got to be about more, you know, I just want what's best for your people. At the end of the day, every day I wake up, I want to serve God's people, and so I think that is the greatest quality of the leader. Awesome, awesome. Um, tell us about some things that you've gone through and mm -hmm. what you did to overcome. You know, I think, I think you know, everybody understands when I lost my first wife, it's probably one of the most traumatic moments of my life. I'm really seven years old, and you know, when I went through that, I was just such a, it was just such a crazy place, you know, because when you build in churches, you do all this stuff, and then you start realizing, oh my goodness, you know, I could have probably been a better husband back then, and then she's sick, and a loser, and then all of a sudden, you're like, oh, I'm in this crazy place, but I gotta keep preaching to your people. And so for me, it was about writing. I put the writing is cathartic for me. I went to counseling. I think, and it's one of the things I've encouraged a lot of people to do. Those of us who lead don't think that it's important to go to counseling. So I went to counseling, and that's what it really helped me overcome. I got a number of people that helped me understand what I was dealing with, the grief of all of that. So, I mean, it was just a tough time, but God saw me through it. Exactly. Um, as you know, um, you are the now the next presiding bishop of Full Gospel Baptist Church. What is your vision to take Full Gospel to the next level? Well, you know, the vision is shift, you know, sustainability, holiness, innovation, faith, and truth, family and truth, transcendence, I'm sorry. And when you think about the shift, it really is about, you think about what the church is, right? And it's like this, this, place, this place of apathy and stagnation. It's like the earth is growing for something fresh and new. And so the shift is really about taking us to the next level, uh, really helping people understand things that matter in the kingdom. So it's built around four critical areas. Uh, I call them four Fs. It's uh, faith, family, fitness, and finance. So when you look at those four areas, these are areas you think about our faith, contending for the faith, letting people know we're going to still fight for our faith. We're going to do things and show people the church has to go outside the walls and minister to people in the streets. Secondly, it's about, you know, our families. It's about supporting family units that, you know, hey, it's too much to wants in the body of Christ. We've got to fight and contend for our families, support single mothers, and have our conference be more family friendly. It's about fifth, my goodness, health and wellness. It's such an important area. My wife is going to oversee that area. Too many of our people are dying of preventable diseases in the church. Obesity is too high. That's a big issue. And then, of course, finally, it's, it's really fine that you know, because if, you, if you're sick, then you end up broke, and you can't do it. How can you be a blessing if you're not blessed? And it's really not so much about just being a blessing for you. Because my mantra is that God does not call us to be a reservoir of selfishness, but a channel of blessings. And so I want people to be freed up from all this unnecessary debt so we can bless the kingdom. Yeah. If you had uh, this one chance uh, to prove to those who had you out yeah. as the, uh, the next presiding bishop, um, what would you say to them, if anything at all? You know, I, I would just say, you know what, um, what the scripture says, to be of God, you'll see, leave it alone. And if it's not, you'll know, you'll know. And I think for me, you know about the fruit that it bears. And ultimately, I don't want people to, to look at me and say, you know, oh, yeah, I just want people to understand it is the fruit of the anointing of my life. And I just stand back and watch what God does through me. You know, I've been, people have naysayed me for years. When I first got to Mount Zion, the same thing. Hey, young guy, how you going to do that? You know, how you going to do that? I just, you know, it ain't about me. So I'm just the vessel. And ultimately, it's not even about them looking at me. I want them to keep their eye on him because everything that happens through me is all about me. Last question. Yeah. If you had to do it all over again, would you? Absolutely. Everything. I'll do it all over again. And um, I wouldn't trade nothing for my journey. I would. Amen. Thank you. And finance.
by shifting, looking at our faith, the Lord's church, we got to be clear. We got to make certain that we clear our thoughts. We and ourselves are spiritual and prophetic laryngitis, and we got to speak truth to power. We got to have the faith that addresses the social ills of our communities, and we've got to declare today that there is a power that is resident within all believers to give us an empowered life. You see, the kingdom of darkness is raising its head in our communities, on our college campuses, and even in our churches. But God has called us to have dominion in the earth, and we will not back down. Evil will not prevail. The kingdom may suffer violence, but the violence will take it by force. We're focusing on the family. We're reclaiming our families. We're strengthening our families. Truth of the matter is, we have no integrity. We have no voice to speak out on who wants to love who, but we can't stay with who God put us with. At the end of the day, we got to fight for the family. We got to fight and declare that God raised up the family to be the foundation of our community. And at the end of the day, we've got to be a fellowship that's family friendly. We're focusing on fitness with the help of my beloved wife. I'm praying for things we ought not have to die from because we don't want to deal with it in the church. We have to focus and operate as a multi-dimensional beings that we were created to be. And so I'm excited that my wife is launching a successful program that we've seen work called Church Fit that's going to get us all in shape. That's going to help us be the people that God wants us to be. We cannot fulfill purpose unless we are healthy to do it. And then finally, finance. We've got to be on the cutting edge of economic empowerment. It is not God's desire for us to be broke. It is not God's desire for us to die and leave our families with nothing. The Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. We're called to be the lenders, not the borrowers. We're called to deal with economic issues and raise the question why are payday loans always in our community? Is who will go with me? I've shared with you the direction that we're going for gospel and God has shown me a great vision for this fellowship. And I, like the prophet Isaiah, I humbly stand ready and willing to serve the clarion call to the leadership, responding to the Lord's call, saying, send me. I'll go. And my question tonight for you, for gospel, for those of you around this world, who will go with me? Who will go with me to spark a revival across this nation and world to transcend what's been and to shift what we desire to see in our faith communities and families and health and finances? Who will go with me to lead the way of innovation and assure that all of our churches within the fellowship operate with strategies to match this generation to whom they're trying to provide ministry? Who will go with me as we innovatively build upon the strong legacy to reach this new generation? Who will go with me? as we raise the standard of righteousness in this sensitive world. There's so much happening in our world, and I close. This generation is looking at us and they're wondering what some of the church left us out there to try. And this world is looking for answers in all kinds of things. They're looking for answers in the street. They're looking for answers, thinking that the world can legislate their problems away. But we have come tonight to declare We've got the answer. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. His name is Jesus. And tonight we declare, no matter what this world may be dealing with, the answer is still the same. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves, pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, and will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal the land. Tonight, full gospel, I give God glory for what God has done through this fellowship, but tonight I need somebody to give God glory for the shift that's about to take place, not just in your community, but all across this world. Would you just help me give God glory for the shift that's about to take place. Thank you tonight. I want every bishop, every leader to know I'm a different kind of bishop. I'm just like Bishop Morton. I don't need a whole lot of stuff. All I need the people who want to serve. That's all I want to do 
is bless those who are the least, the last, and the left out. I'm just a young boy from Shreveport, Louisiana, who 20 some years ago sat in the New Orleans Superdome in the nosebleed section with my back to the wall, direct center of the pool pit to hear this man preach the first message. And I stand today at the helm of the same fellowship to tell you it doesn't matter where you start. If God has a plan for your life, promotion does not come from the east. It does not come from the west. But promotion comes from God. God bless.